morning, guys. Hope you're doing well. We're coming to the end of the month now, so we've got the end of month shenanigans, and we've got a pal speech later as well. Um, so the risk calculus are off, as you would probably see from looking at the indices. We are entering bear market territory on the Dow Jones now because we're 20% off its high. And uh, so that's a bit of a uh, risk narrative there. So what the retail guys would do today, they're probably going to buy uh, because we're dealing with apes now and we're not really dealing with sheep. Uh, back many years ago, the sheep would have got scared by now and they would have exited. But the apes um, are holding on and they're powered by Reddit because they've got a community and they hold on. So... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they're just going to hold and then price would have to go and punish them. And if it does, then then it's it's probably uh, I'm going to blame them, I think, because uh, they skewed the market um, with their sentiment. And obviously there has to be someone on the other side of that trade to counter their, uh, you know, that bias. So um, we might continue to be risk off. Depends on what the retail guys do and if they hold. They, they might hold. I think they probably will. Pound's going to be a bit skewy, I think. Uh, it initially did quite well for us, um, but then it just like uh, depreciated, and it could be, continue to depreciate in in uh, performance terms, and it might come back over here gradually, and it can join its buddies over here. The reason for this is the uh, um, you know the statement that came out from uh, Parliament and. Uh, it was unexpected and uh, it it took the big fish by surprise. So I think this is potentially going to be a bit skewy, I think. And we might see this size get smaller and that indicates a reversal in price. So be careful uh, for the pound. Like I said in Telegram, you should be careful. Uh, so that's very skewed. Nearly nine people are buying risk versus the one person selling. And that's really unusual. Normally they're bearish. Uh, yields pumped, uh, less so in the six month, 12 month and two year. Uh, very much out of bonk yield curve. So that's risk off. Um, VIX is above its 52 week midpoint. Um, so that's risk off. Not much change from last Tuesday, apart from dollar Swiss and oil. Uh, they were long on nearly everything. Uh, they just held long, like the hodl thing. Um, so... Uh, that's that. I think we are dealing with apes now, so um, we'll have to wait and see. It's quite frustrating because we're using the sentiment as a bias, but they have to get wiped out in order for trends to change. And the trend won't change unless if they hold on. And uh, so we really want liquidity probes and reversals, but they won't probe liquidity if they hold on. Right? They've got to get stopped out. <laughs> uh, so there's the king dollar. Uh, that's the just USD being Hulk and it's smashing everything and that's that so just uh, dollar strength but you know why because we're risk off on our risk calculation that's important okay so we don't really want to be fighting the fundamental flows that are supporting the USD wait for things to go risk on then maybe look to sell USD potentially uh, we have an issue with the dollar yen because we've got uh, intervention from the BOJ that's causing a lot of volatility. And there's even talk about uh, the Bank of England stepping in as well. So very unprecedented, volatile times. So be careful. Uh, GU is lagged and the dollar Swiss is the leader. And that's that. Uh, yeah, this requires a little bit of caution. I did say just to monitor, but we are going to record today's trade of the day. Um, it's just kind of frustrating about what the pound's done uh, at the beginning of the week. And we, we don't really know what's going to happen with the pound now. It is a bit of a gamble. One way that we can do something if we want to, you know, get more information is to check your failure rate and then check the, um, you know, the particular currency pair that you're interested in and then, you know, you get the sales to match. That's one way of looking at it. We are quite low on the failure rate as well. So that would tell me to just take a step back and wait for that to improve before entry. Uh, that's something you could do if you wanted to take the trade of the day just come to this tab and uh, so if you want to join there's some tiers there so that's fine that's quite self-explanatory there's the link for patreon uh, discord and telegram uh, so s p very heavy and uh, the 21 moving average will keep on here now and i think eventually we're going to retrace higher and we're going to test the ma where it's going to be a, a sell 
but we are probably maybe you could argue we've maybe overdone it a little bit on the selling we could probably recoil up to test the ma in order to sell and then it will zigzag and then eventually the ma will plateau bottom out and then you'd be looking to buy but you wouldn't want it to be buying when the 21 moving average is pointing down note how everything is pretty much a sell they're long and they've held long since a week ago so uh, retail apes and this could potentially be a risky buy but uh you probably maybe want to be looking at technicals maybe a little bit more than the sentiment right now because the sentiment is very skewy so perhaps more emphasis on your technicals and just use this as a like a confluence layer on your technicals uh, so this would be a risky buy but you don't know if you want to be fighting that really you know you want that to like at least you know, even out, level out a little bit. And uh, US 30, so they sold it. Uh, sorry, they went long, so price fell. So that would be normal. And they might sell it here. That's the trouble. We don't know. They probably are going to sell it because we're in bear market territory. When that news flashes up on Bloomberg and CNBC and on all the you know, mainstream press, that's going to send some shockwaves when America wakes up later. And then uh should sell it. That should wipe them out and think, oh, we, we have to sell now. We're in bear market territory. But they do. We'll see a big move of the SSI. And then, you know, that would be the bottom. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is very risky. And we've been a sell for a while as well. Look how choppy it is. It's really horrendous. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I would. it would be a risky buy here. But I wouldn't say risky. I'd say very risky because of the fundamentals. And, uh, yeah. That's that. So just be very careful. The DAX very choppy, bearish really, to be honest with you. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, gold made a risky buy yesterday, so we did come up quite a bit. I think we rallied like twenty bucks or so. Not a bad little trade, if you called it. And then uh, you know, sort of like we plateaued a little bit, and then they went long, so we fell. At least this is respecting the sentiment. This isn't nowhere as crazy as this. Gold's a little bit smoother. And so they've gone long, and then so that adds to the big picture that it was a sell, but you know it's more of a sell here, and so you know we fell. So that's that. Be careful here because we might get a crossover. Uh, largest stop loss cluster is UJ now at one four five, and the liquidity is fairly large at three point six in size. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about BIJ intervention. If we go above that, so I think maybe one last stop hunt run. And then BOJ intervention, but God knows, um, it might just be testing their resolve, and which is a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, so yeah, be careful. And failure rate, see, it was uh, better, and now uh, currently, as we just looked at it uh, a couple of minutes ago, it's it's become worse. So it's currently paying the retail guys. I'd wait for this to get a bit higher before you enter. Um, ideally, you'd want it about 70-80% before you take the trade of the day. Maybe you wouldn't want to enter now. It's, it's okay, 60%. Um, so the Swiss isn't so good. So in Aussie, the CAD, in Euro, sort of 50-50 scores. And um, yes, we were pound Swiss yesterday, but I woke up too late. It's already made a great distance. We'd rallied like one, nearly 1%. One and uh, obviously looking at things from an ADR perspective, it was a bit reckless to enter when we were at the ADR high. But I recorded it anyway because we didn't have a trade of the day on Monday. So we had to, you know, we had to have a trade of the day. And uh, the pound had deviated sufficiently enough from the Swiss. And it rallied 1%, like I say. But of course, it you know it retraced, and uh, uh, you could have called it earlier than me because I woke up at seven yesterday. You, depends on where you are in the world. You could have probably caught more pips, and then you could have maybe moved your stop ahead of entry, you know, and then put profit and stuff. But we had a sixty-eight pip uh, loss yesterday, so we are down on the week. But um, overall, with the big picture, we are up massively, uh, nearly five thousand five hundred pips since the conception of the bubbles. So 68 pips isn't really a big deal, but it is frustrating. And the pound is going to probably be skewy today, um, but we'll have to wait and see. And technically, we know we're quite, quite extreme, as you can see. So we aren't getting any signals because of the extremity of the technicals. If we get a signal from the sentiment, it has to adhere to the technical. So we've got to wait for the technical to 
at least get to neutral. At the moment, you know, we're only going to get a strong sell on the EU. We're only going to get a strong sell on GU. We're only going to get a strong buy on UJ. Okay, so we have to probably wait for these technicals to go to neutral. And it's going to probably be next week, potentially. Uh, it's a bit boring, admittedly. It's just so much dollar strength. It's just one-way traffic, isn't it? So, and it's going to chop because the sentiment is attempting to move away. But every time it does, the technicals come in and the fundamentals just slap it down. And uh, there's the power speech. We've also got a speech from BOE. Uh, that can probably be of note for you guys um, if you've got tr uh, pound exposure. Uh, Cunliffe is talking. Uh, Lagarde is also making a speech. And we've got a power speech. And um, we've got jobless claims tomorrow, but then we've got the end of the month to... You know, not necessarily be concerned about, but just to keep on our, um, you know, you know, in our in our minds. Power speech later. Keep calm. All trade safely. I'm going to do a quick two minute video on the indices, and we'll see how we go. And um, I guess we're just going to be strong on the USD because we risk off. So every time these try and move away, they get crushed. So uh, be very careful, and um, eventually they will reverse. But um, we, we are dealing with apes, so we have to wait and see. And uh, so trade carefully and let me know if I can help as well, because I'm around all day and uh, just let me know. And also we've got, uh, you know, some quite cool um, live prices on Discord now. So hopefully they come in useful. I learned a bit of code yesterday, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'll speak to you soon. Have a good day and I'll speak to you guys in the private feed uh, for a two minute video.